And now, Martin Yan, the Chinese chef. Neoma, that's a greeting from the East. And how are you is a greeting from the West. Today, we're having an East meets West menu. Lap chong, big clams, pineapple lemon chicken, and potato pork pancakes. The first dish I want to show you is a wonderful appetizer for cocktail parties. It's a wonderful dinner entree. If you cook them a lot and you prepare them ahead of time, you can serve them anytime you wish. You start with approximately 10 to 12 live clam, three stalks, three whole green onion, one Chinese sausage, about three to four black mushroom, they call shiitake in Japanese cooking, and also four or five to six water chestnut. And of course, I have quarter pound prawn or shrimp, and also one clove of garlic, and a tiny bit of ginger. Very simple dish. If you want to make it more exotic, you can also add some chopped cilantro. It's very easy to do. The first thing you do is steam the clam, or you can boil the clam to make sure they open. If the clam is not open, don't break in the house because they don't want to play games. <laughs> that means it's not fresh. Fresh clam, live clam, when you bake it, they open, right? If it's not open, it's not good, okay? Now, I try to save time, so I have steamed some clam ahead of time. And then, we are going to get a bowl, put it right here, and get this ready. Take this off. Take the clam. Don't throw this away because I'm going to use this to stuff. And then you use some shrimp. Let me show you one more time how to take this out. Shell, take this out. And then how to mash these. So simple. Just simply smash these. The stronger you are, the better job you can do. All done. Look at how easy it is. Chop up some of these, put it all here, and also have some garlic. Put it over here, take the skin off, and then press it and go. <laughs> wow! And also some ginger. Now, cooking should be fun. You should never do things like this with straight face, because this is ridiculous. <laughs> it should be, as soon as you start it, you go. <laughs> go like this, because this way you are relaxed, you are having a good time, and we're gonna mince this. Wow, and then go. Put it right here. Now, to save time, we also have a tiny bit of this mince ahead of time. We're gonna put this in. Put this in. Put some of these chopped mushroom, water chestnut, oh, I want to show you this is fresh water chestnut. How many of you here in the audience have ever tried fresh water chestnut? They're wonderful. Anybody? There are quite a few people. They are sweet, they are crispy, they're wonderful. Now also put some green onion and also some lap cheung. That means Chinese sausage. Lap cheung. Mix them all up. Marinated with a tiny bit of salt, a tiny bit of salt and a tiny bit of dry sherry. You can use Chinese rice wine. Stir them all up. Stir them all up. Stir them all up. And then you are going to use a knife to show you how to do it. One of these. Put them over here. Fill it up like this. This is wonderful for appetizer. Fill it up. Okay, everybody can tell. 
after you do that, you pack this with a tiny bit of Japanese style, Oriental style bread crumb called panko. You can use the regular bread crumb. You just sprinkle it here, sprinkle it in, pack them up like this. And then you are going to put it in a plate of rock salt because you don't want this to fall down. So let's pack this up, pack this up, pack this up, pack the, pre press it really hard, press this up, and then press this up, and then you bake it at 400 degrees for approximately six to eight minutes. Okay, let's go over there and put this in. Hot. And then in the meantime, I want to save time, so I bake some of these ahead of time. Ah, yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Look at how gorgeous this is. This is what I call the big clam, Chinese style. <laughs> We're gonna do pineapple lemon chicken. In this particular dish, we have two whole chicken breasts. We have one egg. We have one tablespoon of sesame seed roasted. And we also have some brown sugar, butter or margarine, one tablespoon, two pineapple ring, and also some lemon and lemon peel, and a tiny bit of ginger. And of course, we started out by deboning the chicken. But before I do that, I would like to tell you there are things in life that need teamwork. And cooking should not be a lonely experience today. I'm proud to have as my guest, the food editor of Bon Appetit magazine, Jane Weimer. Oh, I think it's wonderful because today we have wonderful guests like you and also we have wonderful audience like these people. We're going to have a wonderful show. And wonderful chef. I'm not quite sure about that. <laughs> now, to save space, we're going to put this over here. We're going to put this over here. We're going to put this over here. And we have one egg so we can get rid of these. Now, I'm not quite sure. I'm quite sure everybody know how to debone chicken. But I just thought that I want to show people how to do it by hand. You put your thumb right here in this hole here. You push it out. You push it down. The whole thing comes out. Push it out, push it down. The whole thing comes out like this. And then you hold on to the very top. You push it down like this. Push it down. And the whole thing comes out. Then the only thing left is this little piece of Tender on. You hold on to the ligament. You grab hold of this and you push it down. Jen, I know that you're expert. You can do this for me. Why? I'm gonna get everything else ready. Let's save these for homemade soup stock. Now I'll give you an idea. You push this here. Push it out. Push it down. Push it out. I got long thumbs. See, perfect, perfect, perfect. Take it out. Take it out. Hey, yeah, let's give Jen wow. a big hand. He's got all over here. Let's save this. Save right. this. Hold on to this and take it out. Perfect. Wow, this is the way to go. That'll this make way, a real rich stock. Because Lots you don't, of chicken left on. You do not want to waste the no. bone. The Chinese never throw anything away except the cluck. <laughs> now, I want to show everybody also how to take this away. This is a very, very easy way to do it. You push it right here, push it in, and you just push this whole thing, and the whole thing comes out like this. Isn't that fascinating? Now, Jen, you can do it with that one. This is a French chef knife. This way, we can get this ready. Now here, in the meantime, I want to show you. Wow, look at this. She did a much better job than I can do. The next thing I want to show everybody is how to cut this by slant cutting, to make it twice as big by slant cutting or parallel cutting technique. One, two. So you cut this and make it into two pieces. 
and each piece about this theme. Look at this. Chicken to read through. Right. This way you can feed everybody in the studio. We have 600 people here. <laughs> now, but just the, that piece. Yeah. We don't have to. All we have to do is we can pound it like this. Let's pound this a little bit, and then the wonderful thing about Chinese knife is you can use this for pounding, for slicing too. Let's go. Pound this. You can use that knife Wanna to pound, pound this. Yeah, you can pound this. Wow, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Jen, I know that you told me you have been working in the food business for many years, and food is your life. And Jen promised me after we finish, she is going to wash dishes for us because <laughs> because that's part of cooking. No, I thought I promised you I was going to eat everything afterwards. No, because by the time the audience finish, we won't have anything left. Now, oh. let's put it together, and then we're going to beat up an egg. Let's beat this up with a chopstick. Let's beat this. this is how the Chinese beat up egg. This is a Chinese egg beater. Put them all together. There are two ways to do this particular dish. One is you coat it with this beaten egg, and then coat it right here in this panko. Okay, mix some panko with some sesame seed together, and then we can coat this. And then the other way of doing it is we make a batter, so we can do it. I'm gonna do it this way. You can do it this way. Dip it into egg batter, dip it in here. Then we can both deep fry it and see how it comes out. Okay. Sounds terrific. Okay, let's put it here. Sprinkle it. I'm gonna do it this way. You can do it this way. Then we can deep fry it over there because we have a tiny bit of oil ready. Approximately two and a half to three cups of oil ready. Nice, thick batter like this, okay? This is the one I would do. I'll do another one because people are quite hungry because they have been here since four o'clock this morning. <laughs> Pound this. Pound this and put it in here. We will both deep fry this. I have learned a secret that you can only use one hand because if I use two hands, then you get stuck in the batter. And then the ba batter gets stuck to you and the chicken gets stuck to you. I think so that make a only lot of one sense. hand. I learned something new today. Yeah, that's true because when you do that, you can use another hand to do something else. Well, that's to get you out of this hand. Right. Let's do it this way. After you do that, put it over there and I'm going to put this in a pound coat. Good. Let's do on this one. one. Yeah, please. Let's put this over here. Let's put this over here. Jen, I don't know whether you know that I have been a subscriber of your wonderful magazine since 1975. Well, I'm thrilled to any, know that. I never get any discount, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maybe have... my life changed. <laughs> <laughs> now, this particular thing, I'm going to deep fry it here. Jen, give me a hand to put the other piece here so we can deep fry it. In the meantime, while we're deep frying, I think I'm going to ask Jen because I said, this is a teamwork thing. You can't do it by yourself. It's more fun to do it together. We are going to deep fry this while we're making a sauce. So you know, you know what I have here? I have one can of pineapple. One can of pineapple, one to two teaspoons of soy sauce and brown sugar, one tablespoon to one and a half tablespoon, and a tiny bit of butter. And mm. of course, I also have some lemon rind. And bring to a boil to make it into a sauce. Now, when this is done, we will, can you also do me a favor? Let us uh, move this a little bit, and then I have a plate underneath there so we can put them together. Deep fry this. The most important thing in deep fry food is make sure the oil is nice and hot. We call this, you know why we call this pineapple, lemon, chicken? Because it's got pineapple and lemon and chicken. No, that's not really true because the pineapple was not lemony enough. And the lemon, it was not pineapple-y enough. Fortunately, and the chicken? The chicken is chicken-y enough. Thank goodness. <laughs> now we put them all together. Deep fry, you see, it's nice and golden brown. Can you see that? Nice and golden brown. Nice and golden brown. When it's golden brown, we take it out. We are going to, let's remove these things. Let's remove this. Let's remove this so we can chop it up and put it on this nice plate and garnish it with pineapple ring. Oh. See, this is the way you do. Tempura red. After it's done, let it put it here. 
and let the oil drain back so you don't waste any oil. In the meantime, I have a piece over there. Let's chop it up. I'm gonna show everybody. I chop up one piece, you chop up one piece. All done. Put it over here. Look at this. When this is done, we pull the sauce right on top. Wonderful. And then, of course, we will cut a tiny piece of pineapple. Put it right here as a garnish. Put it right here as a garnish. And then we pull the sauce right on top. Look at how gorgeous this dish. This is the most delicious dish. You can sprinkle a tiny bit of extra. Look at how beautiful this is. This is wonderful dish. Over there, have a question for us. Yes, I'm having a lot of trouble with tofu. How do you dry it out without uh, ruining the shape of it? Okay, the thing is, when you buy it, make sure you let it sit there in a rag or in a strainer yeah. for about five to 10 minutes to reduce, to make sure some of the water is pressed out. Okay? Or you can put a brick on right, it you or, can put or a, some sort of weight board, on it, a raft. Plate, it. whatever, to press the water out. out. Then when you cut it, they won't fall apart. Betty has a question for us. Yes, I was wondering how dried bean curd is made. Jen, maybe oh. you should answer the question. Well, I saw tofu being made in Japan, and actually it's like washing clothes. The foam comes to the top, and basically it's, it's the oil from the soybean, and it's sort of scooped off with, with a big mesh spoon, and then put on racks to dry, just as you would do with your clothes. And only a Chinese person or a Japanese person would never do that at home. They would just go to the store and buy it already hung and dried. So, and you can buy it right here, certainly in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, and in Chinatown and Oriental markets throughout the states. These are the ones that you just brought in with you. These are dehydrated bean curd sheets. Yep. These are bean curd sticks. Now, let's get the show going on the road. Otherwise, we'll never get up. Now, the next thing I want to show everybody is potato pork pancake. The gin is going to work with that because this is also needs teamwork. Now, first, we have a potato here. We need about one to two potato, two eggs, two to three to four black mushroom, some chopped green onion, one clove of chopped garlic, one to two slices of chopped ginger, and also four to five chopped water chestnut. And of course, I have a quarter of a pound of ground pork or you can use ground meat, or you can use shrimp, you can use chicken. It doesn't make any difference. Or you can use sausage. What a great idea. <laughs> Let's use the sausage. It happened we have some cooked sausage here. Let's put this in here to save time. Let's chop, I chop some green onion, you chop some green onion. But let us do it like this, let us do this like this. Put it all over here, and then let us put it here, and also grate the potato. Let's put the potato. Martin, you know, the French have lots of wonderful recipes for potato pancakes, but I don't remember, you know, having it in a Chinese restaurant or, or seeing potatoes used well, very much in a Chinese potato Well, potato is quite popular in my household. My mom always fixed me potato pancake. For breakfast? For breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. Stir this a little bit. Let's put the rest of the dish in. Mushroom, garlic, ginger, and water chestnut. Do you think that they're ever going to have fresh water chestnuts available throughout the United States? The fresh ones are so much better than the ones that are canned. It is like eating an entirely different thing. They are so crisp, I think so are, fresh. I think there are more and more places in Chinatown. Oh, I hope so. The more places in the U.S. have water chestnut. Let's put this here and also some cornstarch. And then we can start making these potato pancake. Okay, why we're making this potato pancake? We would like to, uh, to ask you to do me a favor to make some sauce with, to serve with this. You don't serve this with corn syrup. You serve this with a sauce with three quarter cup of homemade soup stock, one green onion chopped, and also a tiny bit of ginger, and also a tiny bit of cornstarch. Mix it up. And then we already have some over there. Let's add a tiny bit more over here so we can start cooking. Let's stir this. You got a 
something here. Let's stir. Why? I am doing a pancake right here. Now, I'm not quite sure how many of you know. Let's do this like this. Put it here. Put this or put this right here. Let us use approximately one tablespoon. I'm going to make one and you're going to make one for me. Put it, put it all together. You can, oh, we got to stir this along. otherwise. We're going to get into trouble. Stir this, stir this, stir this. Okay, toss this. Make sure the pancake is nice and round. If it's not round, it's not good because nice round pancake. Let's put this in. Let's put this in. Let's just put this in. I'm going to put one over here and then one for you, one for me. One for you. Big one, one for me. Big one. big one. Let's have a big one. Thank you. That's a big one. That's a big one. Stir it a little bit. Make sure you stir it. Otherwise, you're going to have, and I'm having dehydrated corn syrup sauce. <laughs> Called a reduction. Let me put it. Make sure, because I use a non-stick cooking surface to cook this. That's why I don't really have to use too much oil. If you use a regular wok, you might need to use a uh, a little bit more oil. That's a wonderful uh, thing about non-stick cooking surface. Let's put a tiny bit more oil here. Do you ever here. like to use cast iron for something like this as well? Well, I love cast iron. I have one cast iron wok at home. In fact, my mother also used a cast iron wok. I just visited my mother approximately two months ago, and I fixed her dinner in her cast iron wok. How many of you have a cast iron cooking utensil at home? See, most people do. They are, they're very thick. They conduct heat very evenly. They're wonderful cooking utensils. Let's put this here. They're also not very expensive. No, they are not. Let me show everybody how easy it is to toss food around, OK? You can do it in a wok. I want to show you how to do it this way. I want to show you how to do it this way. Let's get rid of these first. I want to show you how to do it. Wow, look at this. Nice and golden brown. When this is brown, you got to cook this for about one to two minutes. Otherwise, they are not cooked because you want to make sure the potato is nice and cooked. And crisp. Stir and crisp. I understand that you love potatoes, potato pancakes. There are all kinds of potato pancakes. All kinds of potatoes anyway. Fried, chopped, boiled, baked. Per, per, per. Make one more. Let's make one more. The French do that with crepes, and if it lands on the floor, you're going to be alone the rest of your life. I don't it want to be alone. It means you become an adult if you've I, learned how to flip your I crepes. I do not want to be alone. Now, let us add a tiny bit more, and let's do this. In the meantime, let me stir fry this. Stir this, stir this. Turn it up. Turn it up a little bit. Get it boiling. And let it get it boiling. In the meantime, let's see how that is coming along. Turn it over. Let's turn it over. And then I want to make sure everything is done at the same time. How many of you have a dishwasher at home? Everybody have a dishwasher at home. Jen told me she does so much cooking at home, she actually needs two dishwasher. One here, one here. <laughs> the wonderful, and one here. The wonderful thing about dishwasher is even though when there's no electricity, this still work, you know? Now, let this is done. Ready Let's put that this one? over here. Put this over here. There's a plate. This right here. Let's put, I, in the beginning, have cooked a few extra ones too. Let's put this over here. I want to flip him still, oops. Okay. There we go. Let's put this over here. And then we serve these with these sauce. Look at how gorgeous this look. Look at this. It's very easy. It's wonderful for snack. It's wonderful. It's also a complete meal. Yes. And you don't need anything else with it. Has Jen Weimer been a wonderful guest? Remember, Thank you. if Jen and Yen can talk, so yeah. can you. Bon appetit. Hold down the whole step. Join in. Join in.